Would you like to run your Docker-based applications on computer clusters? Would you like to learn and discover Docker Swarm components through examples? Would you like to see the typical maintenance tasks in action? My name is Mark. This is my introduction to Docker Swarm tutorial. In this video, you will learn about Docker Swarm. I have put together a little agenda that you can see here, hopefully there on the screen. And this is what we're going to do now. We're going to see a single host example. I will show you how to turn your own local machine into a Docker Swarm cluster. Then we will set up a multi-host cluster. I have set up two virtual machines and I will show you how to do that. And then we will deploy a small application and we will experiment with it and see the concepts and objects in Docker Swarm. Then we will go to the next step and we'll see what node, stack, services, tasks and containers mean in the Docker Swarm context. And I will show you how to manage them and how to work with these. Then we will see how to add deployment configuration to the Compose file. So how to drive Docker Swarm with the Compose file. And then we will see a typical tasks like draining a node and a rolling update. And then I will show you how you can set up a high availability cluster, high availability cluster. Uh, on AWS with standard tools. And, they, and at the end we will also mention Kubernetes because uh, it's related to Swarm and I want you to know about it. This learning video is also available as a blog post and I think the best learning experience would be to open up the blog post, the link is just below the video. And please open it up and keep it open, watch the video and then you can go back to the article that has everything written down and detailed out and you can use that as a reference also during the video and later on. But let's start with a single node example. Let's open up Terminal and I'll show you how to turn your own local machine into the Swarm cluster. This is best when you do local development and you want to test something on your local machine. So all you need to do is to start Swarm mode. Swarm comes pre-installed is part of the Docker engine. So once you got the Docker engine installed, Swarm is already part of it. So all you need to do is Docker Swarm in it. It's a simple command. Let's type it here. Docker Swarm in it. That's all. So now you hit enter and if you have Docker on your machine, then you are in Swarm mode immediately. Now your machine or any host that joins the Swarm, because it's a multi-host environment, so multiple hosts can join the Swarm, can use the tokens that I provided here. My local machine right now is a manager node in the Swarm, which means that I can connect to this node and use this node to drive the entire cluster. And if I want to add more computers, I can use this command with the join token to, to, to connect more computers into the same Swarm. And we're gonna do this later on. So right now what we got is one machine, which is a manager and a worker at the same time. So manager is the node that manages the cluster and worker is the node that runs the worker containers, the working processes in your application. So right now, my local machine has both roles is a worker and a manager at the same time. So I can deploy an application here on this node and make it work. So I have put together a little application for this and I will show that to you. It's a node application using Express and all it does is basically return one message, hello from node, and it will return the host name because we're gonna scale out this application. So we're gonna run multiple instances and then the host name will show that the, the instances are really actually changing. So this is the application. I have a, sorry, I have a Docker file as well. The, the Docker file is pretty simple. All I'm doing is I'm copying uh, this source code into this image, installing Express with NPM install, and then I start up the application. So let's look at the Docker Compose file because the Compose file is an interesting part. Now, you might, I'm sure you are familiar with Docker Compose. If you are not, please go back to the previous videos or if you're not familiar with Docker file, please go back to the previous videos because you need to know these things. You need this knowledge to follow the swarm examples that I show you here. So I have a Docker file, this is Docker Compose file, sorry. And the Docker Compose file is a standard Docker Compose file. So the same thing that we use with Docker Compose. And the good news is that you can use the Compose file, the standard Compose file to drive Docker Swarm. It's the same thing, same Compose file. Uh, I will show you the differences because there are some differences, um, but they are in the content. So they are in, in, the, in the specific cases inside the file. So for example, Docker Swarm, will ignore anything that you want to build 
but uh, you can you can use other keywords that are specific to swarm and some others are specific to compose and i will show you how to find out you know what is specific to which uh, which component so in this compose file i have two services and one service is my my web service is which is the node.js application and i have added a mongodb service as well which, which is going to be my database I have not connected these on the code level, so please don't, don't look for that. This is just going to be two components that I'm going to be deploying to my swarm. And, and in the multi-host scenario, we show you how to make sure that the DB goes to the right place and the web goes to the right place and they are scaled appropriately. So this is my compose file. I have two services and now we are ready to deploy. So if this was a standard Docker compose scenario, I would say like Docker compose up and this whole thing would start up. But we are not using Docker Compose, we are using Docker Swarm. So what is the difference? The difference between Docker Compose and Docker Swarm is that Docker Compose is a single host solution, so it only works with one host. Docker Swarm, on the other hand, is a multi-host solution, so it works with multiple hosts. That's the, that's the big difference. And, you know, I cannot use Docker Compose up because I don't want to run this with Docker Compose, I want to run this with Docker Swarm. So in the, in the Swarm world, we call this a stack. So if you look at my little agenda here, this is the first thing. So I've created node, this is already done, this is my local machine. And then we have something, it's object called stack. And there's a related management command in Docker that says Docker stack. So this is what we use. And yeah, you can look at the help by just hitting return right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the deploy sub command to Docker stack deploy whatever is written down it's defined in our compose file so that's what we're going to do docker stack deploy and then we go minus c which is the name of the compose file that's why it's called c and then i say docker compose yml and so that means that i'm using this docker compose file obviously and i have to give it a name and i will call this node app so i'm calling this node app and if i hit enter look what happens the same thing happens that is usually happening with Docker Compose, that Docker is automatically creating the network that I have defined in Compose file, and it's creating the services, like the web service and the DB service, the two services that I have defined in the Compose file. And what you also see here that is ignoring the option build, and this is what I said, that Docker Compose would not ignore build. Docker Compose will actually do the build, build your image for you, whatever you describe, in the compose file under build, Docker Compose will build it. But Docker Swarm will not build it because it, the, the idea is that in a Docker Swarm class that you have a you have multiple machines somewhere in the cloud running your applications. So when you run that applications, every service has a, a dedicated image and those image images are pulled from some sort of Docker registry. In this case, on my local computer, I have already built my image with Docker Compose build. So I have used just Docker Compose build to build my image a standard way. Yeah, I can, I can show you to it's all coming from cache now because I've already done this. So once the image is there, then Docker will use it. If my image, I, I have actually pushed this image to, to, to Docker Hub as well. So the normal workflow is the Docker stack deploy will pull the image from the Docker Hub or your, or your custom registry and then run the containers with those images that are pulled from the central hub. This is how it works. So what happened is that I have deployed my stack into the Docker Swarm. So in order to test it, we can very simply, oops, just now, let me resize this quickly and close this friendly reminder. Okay, so just to show it to you, this guy is working, so it says hello from node, so the application is deployed. So this is how you do this. You define, a, you get a standard Docker Compose file and you do Docker stack deploy and your stack is deployed. So if I do Docker stack, so Docker stack, stack LS, I can list the stacks that are deployed to my swarm. So you see now that in the current swarm, there are two services and this is the node app. This is the name of the stack node app and it has two services running. Now, we already had services and use services in Docker Compose because when in the Compose file you define everything as a service and this time we have already also defined everything as a service but the difference is that this time the service has become a dedicated object that you can manage 
with a dedicated Docker command. So if I go Docker service ls, this doesn't work with uh, Compose because Compose doesn't create these services, these are specific to Swarm. So Docker service ls will list the services that are related to your Swarm. So these are the two services. You see the one that is the DB, the other one is the web. This is the name that I defined in my Compose file. These are here and it's replicated. It's running one replica. This one is also running one replica. This is a Mongo and this is my custom build stuff. And these are the ports that are mapped. So this is a new object. This is a new command Docker service. You can use Docker service to update and change these uh, running services that you have in your Swarm cluster. So before I show you how to do that, let me explain you know, how to best design your application to use these things. So what is a stack? What is a stir service? You know, if, you, if you're listing here your Docker stacks, it implies that you can have multiple stacks and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deploy another stack in a minute and then you will see that we can deploy actually multiple stacks. So the good, the good, good idea to design your application is that you should be able to design and deploy multiple stacks that run in parallel. So what you could do, for example, you can have a front-end stack, you can have a back-end stack, and you can have an operations or monitoring stack. So you can have like three different stacks in the same application that add up together to provide the functionality that you want to provide to you, give to your users, right? So you can have multiple stacks. And in each and every stack, you can have multiple services. So you have like your front-end stack may have many different services that you run in them. You have the same way, the back-end stack, it has DBs, it has servers, whatever you have. And monitoring the same thing, you have log management, you have other stuff. So in different stacks, you can have different services. And you can manage all of these things with these commands. So Docker stack, Docker service manages all the services that you have in the swarm, but if you are only looking for service in, in a specific stack, you can do Docker, Docker stack services, and then you go NodeApp, which is the name of the stack. So this will list out the services in a given stack, okay? So right now I have deployed, I have one node in this Swarm cluster, and I have uh, one stack, and I have the services, I have two services in this stack. So what I can do, Let's, uh, let me show you something. Let's scale out these services. So well, uh, what you can do with this guy here is the Docker service scale and node app web. I take this web service and say that I want to I run four replicas of this service. And if I just hit return, you see that I can centrally manage my services by just saying, you know, what I want to, to, to be happening, I want to scale this service. So with a single command, I scale this service. And if I go back to my browser here and hit refresh a couple of times, you see that the responses are coming from different instances because the host name is changing. And I will give you, I will, we will visualize this. So I will give you a visual representation of this as well. So this is the, to get started, this is the main thing. And, um, I think we should be moving on to the um, to the multi-host example, and after we have moved to the multi-host example, I will show you all these things one by one, and we will go a little bit deeper on how to manage this. So this was a so, sort of a short showcase, short demo, you know what Docker Swarm can can do for you. And um, I leave this swarm, so this is Docker Swarm leave, and. I, I have to use minus F because uh, I have to force, this is the last node, the single node, the last node in the swarm. So I have to force this to leave the, leave the swarm and I have left the swarm, it is gone. It takes, some, okay, it takes some time. And now, if I do a Docker service LS, just to show it to you, it said that this is not a, a swarm manager. We are not on the swarm, you have to do, do a Docker swarm in it. Same thing if I do a, Docker stack ls, same thing happens. So it says that these commands only work in swarm mode. So if you if you try to use them outside of swarm mode, they will not work. Okay. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the multi-host example. So I can do Docker machine list, and uh, these are the two virtual machines that I have set up, and uh, I need to start these. I use Docker machines to uh, Docker machine to do that. This is a standard command, 
and uh, yeah you can dive into that online and have a look how this works you can create machines on your local machine plus you can create machines in the cloud as well so the the machine that this would create has have a minimal uh, Linux image underneath plus they have Docker installed by default so what you get is a virtual box in my case I got a virtual box virtual machine with Linux and Docker installed inside okay so let me start this up so I say Docker machine start my VM one and this is gonna take some time so I will probably speed up the video both virtual machines are started and um, let's list them quickly so the list says that they are both running and they both have yeah they have their IP addresses assigned and um, yeah let's get started so let's start up swarm on these machines I will do that manually so that you see what's happening but in real life you would probably of course automate this so let's SSH into the first machine SSH my VM one and start the swarm here we are going to use the same command docker swarm in it but this time something strange will happen it says that this uh, this machine has multiple network adapters so we need to specify you know which network address we're gonna advertise so we're gonna say use advertise address and we're gonna use this IP address to to set up the swarm so I'm gonna specify this network adapter here and what's happening is that this says the swarm has been initialized and I can use this token and this command to join this swarm. So I'm going to copy this, leave this machine, SSH into the other machine and paste this thing here. And look what's happened. It has joined the swarm as a worker. So the swarm is up. We need to prepare for deployment. In order to deploy our stack, we need to push our application images to the Docker Hub, which is the central registry, so that our virtual machines will be able to pull those images from the Docker Hub. So this is the next step that we're going to do. We go Docker, sorry, we go Docker Compose, Compose Push to push the images to the Docker Hub. This will take a while, so I will come back once this is done. Okay, this was quick because I've already pushed them, so it didn't take actually no time. And uh, now that the images are pushed, what we need to do, we need to find a way to deploy these, this stack. And the way we do that, our Docker Compose VM is on the local machine, and we need to have access to the virtual machine Docker daemon. So this is done in a way that Docker machine gives us a command, which is Docker machine env, which will list the environment of the, the, of the virtual machine. And we can use this last command here on the output to set our local environment to talk to the Docker daemon in the virtual machine. In this way, we will have access to the local files and at the same time talk to the daemon on the virtual machine. And um, yeah, I can, I can actually show you a quick proof. So if I go docker nodes ls, you can see that on the local machine there are no nodes because I am not in swarm mode. So when, when I go and set up my environment to talk to the daemon in the virtual machine, so this is done. If I run the same command again, it's going to be executed in the virtual machine docker daemon. So now I see that I have actually two nodes in my docker swarm. Because right now, this is coming from the virtual machine, the manager nodes docker engine. Okay, so I'm talking to the right Docker engine and I have uh, everything, the images are pushed. So all I need to do is to Docker stack deploy. So let's do that. Docker stack deploy minus C, Docker compose YML. And let's call this application again, no app. So I started the deployment. The same thing will happen that happened before in the, in the previous case, when we started on the local machine. So the network, the default network will be created and or the, or the user defined network will be created my web application and my db both services are created so if i go docker stack ls you can see that the stack is there and i go docker service uh, docker sir docker uh, let's go docker stack services know that and you see that i have two services running and both of them are running one replica so theoretically we are ready. So let's go docker machine ls and 
take the IP address of one of the machines and have a look at this. So you see that this is working. Uh, this is coming from the virtual machine and our application is up and running. Now let me show you something interesting. If I take the other IP address of the other machine in the swarm and use that to access the application, I can access the application the same way. So this is a manager node, this is a worker node, and both of them publish this functionality on port 80. And how is this possible? So I use the same Docker Compose YML, it's defined only once, but Docker Swarm works in a way that if you connect any of the host machines into the inside the swarm in the cluster, they will actually route to the right service inside the cluster, no matter where you are connecting. So I can use this IP address or the other IP address as well. Okay, so right now, what I wanna show you now is that we're gonna scale the service again. So we go like Docker service scale and we're gonna scale the node app web service to have, I don't know, let's have four replicas. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a visual representation of our Swarm cluster. So the services have been replicated. So let's see what's happening. If I refresh this enough times, you see that the, the responses are coming from different containers. Okay, so as a next step, let's, um, let's deploy the other stack. So Docker stack deploy, there's C, Docker Compose monitoring YML, and let's give this uh, <laughs> the name NodeMon. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do that. Okay, so I'm deploying the visualizer, and it seems that this is done. So let's Docker stack list. I'm listing out, you see, I have actually not two stacks, and one of them is the monitoring, and one of them is the application stack. So Docker stack services node one there are there is one service inside and it's not yet ready because it's still i think uh, pushing the image from the docker hub so we have to wait a little bit and once this is done i will come back and we will see what's going on in our swarm cluster so the services are ready uh, as you see here i have been checking a couple of times and the node visualizer is or docker visualizer is running so let's go back here take this ip address and go to port 8080 and now we got the visualizer up and running. So this says that in our Swarm cluster, we have two nodes here, and uh, these are the containers, these are the services and containers that are running on these machines. So on the, on the manager one, we have one web, one visualizer, another web service, and here we have another web instance, another DB, and the DB is here, and we have another web instance running here. So altogether, we have the four instances of the web, plus the DB, plus the visualizer. And this is how you can see what's happening in the cluster. So this is our cluster representation. So now that we got this, let's explore everything together and um, see what Docker Swarm has to offer, okay? So let's have a look at node, stacks, services, and tasks, and containers, because these are, I think, the, the most important things that we need to talk about right now. Docker node is the management command to work with nodes in the Swarm cluster. So I can do Docker node, and I get the details help what I can do with this command. So you met, you met Docker node ls already, we can list the nodes in the swarm. What we can do, we can promote and demote nodes to managers and promote and demote from managers. What we can do, we can inspect the details of nodes and that's gonna play an important role later. We can, Docker, P, Docker node ps will give us the tasks that are running on each node and we can remove nodes from the swarm cluster. So nodes represent the machines that are in the cluster. So if I go, the next level is stacks. So yeah, we are going one by one. So nodes we have taken, now we are going for stacks. So docker stack is the other command. And with docker stack ls, I can list the stacks. So right now I have two stacks up and running. And with docker stack services, I can list the services in one stack. And with docker stack ps, I can list the tasks in one ta in, 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 in one stack. So you have seen that Docker node, it has a command to list the tasks and Docker stack has a command to list the tasks. But the big question is, what are tasks, right? So let's go and take the next level first, which is node, stack, and service. 
So services are running inside stacks and services are the, are the things that we define in the Docker Compose by ML under the services part. And if I go Docker service LS, you will see that these are the services right now. I have already three services because I have de deployed two stacks and altogether I have three services and one of them has four replicas. And if I come here, then you will see that the service has also a Docker service PS, which will also uh, deploy, d d display the tasks that are running in the service. So again, we are meeting something that is called a task and we need to see what, the, what it does. So we have a dedicated command for Docker node management, Docker stack management, and Docker service management, these three levels. And under the service, we can create new services, just like it's very similar to uh, Docker container run, the way we create containers. The big difference is that these are swarm services that we can scale. So these are scalable services that have containers associated to them. We can inspect, of course, we can look at the logs, we can, we can PS, remove, rollback, all these things, and we can scale, we have used this before. So these are the key commands that we can use. And in this pyramid or in this hierarchy, the next step is to talk about tasks. So tasks are this kind of a, to me it was a mystical object first, but it's nothing mystical actually about this at all. But let's say Docker, Docker service, PS and let's say we go for node app web. So if we list out the tasks that are running in, in our web application, we see that there are four because these are four, we have four replicas, four instances. And each of these instances is listed out here. So these are the four tasks that are running. Are these containers or are, well, what are these tasks? So task is a scheduling entity inside Docker, which means that it's a scheduling slot where, where Docker demo will put the swarm containers. And one task has exactly one container associated with it. The good thing is, you know, the containers can be on any node. It's up to the, the Docker swarm to decide where it will schedule all these containers. But if you look at task, tasks are, are, you know, global for the swarm and you can manage tasks centrally by managing the Docker service. So these are basically not, nothing running, not, no, no real objects. The task is not a real object. It's more like only a scheduling slot for a container. So every one of these tasks has a container associated with it that is running on one of, one of the nodes that are in the swarm. There is no dedicated Docker task management command, so there is no, no command like Docker task like this. You see, nothing is happening because this is not the way to manage the Docker tasks. You are managing that with Docker service. So if you do Docker service and then you scale, you change, you update, you change the configuration, you redeploy, then the task will change according to your definitions, but you are not managing tasks directly. Containers. So containers are scheduled by, by Swarm automatically. And if you do a good old Docker PS, then you will still find that, uh, that your containers are running. And uh, you know, I'm connected to the, the virtual machine number one. So I see those containers that are running on virtual machine number one. So if you look at here, these are the ones that visualize it in web. These are the ones that are running and these are the containers that I see here. And I don't see the other ones that are running on the other node. But if I work with tasks, I see all the tasks running on all nodes. So you see that this is a node list and I can see that this task is running on this node. This one is running on the other one. This one is running here, running there. So this is a global view and this is coming from the big, big scheduling perspective that you need to schedule containers across the entire swarm. And that's why the notion, of, notion of, of task is there. And here on the container level, you can still see the containers, but you are not working with containers directly, although you could. So I could just do a, a Docker kill and kill one of these containers, but I don't want to because I'm supposed to use the Docker service commands to do this. So, so this is the hierarchy. This is how it works. You will see tasks on display many times but you need to know that you are not managing this directly. This is just a scheduling uh, slot for containers that Swarm is using. Okay, 
So now let's change our configuration and see how we can uh, do the deployment configuration inside the compose file. So before I go there, let's open up the Docker compose file reference. Why is not open? Okay, so let's open up the Docker Compose file reference and I want to show you, if you worked with Compose before, you know that you got all the stuff here. And let's look at build, for example. So if you are on the build part and you know that Docker Compose uses build, but Docker Swarm, it does not use build, so it will ignore it. So with every statement, every instruction here, there are usually notes on the documentation saying that this option is ignored in Swarm mode and it's not ignored, it's working in the Compose mode. So whenever you look at the Compose file documentation, you need to look for these kind of differences because when you work with Swarm, you need to know what's happening and, and you know what is used where and how does it work. And the same thing here, you see container name again is ignored in Swarm mode and so on. So there are these little details that you will find out as you are working. So let's go to deploy because deploy is the big one, it works in swarm mode and in swarm mode only. So this is how you define the deployment configuration. So what you can do under de deploy, you define how many replicas you, you, you want to see, you know, you, you want to see the uh, update configuration is the, is the rolling update. So this one says here that I want to see six replicas and I want to do like update two in parallel and with a delay of 10 seconds. So it, it will update two by two. So every time it will update two, co two co containers and the delay between the, these two groups will be 10 seconds. And there's a restart policy also here. So let's see, and of course it has some more. So it has more options, but let me show you a couple of things here that uh, affect our little application. So if I go to the um, the monitor environment that we haven't seen yet, this is the visualizer that we just deployed, it already has some deployment constraints and this means that I want to deploy this guy uh, on a manager node. So uh, this, this is a constraint that you can use like node.role is manager and that means that it's always going to run on a manager node. And this is important because visualizer works in this way that it always runs on a manager node. Okay. And um, let's go back to our normal Docker Compose YML. And now let's change this to add a certain number of replicas. Deploy six replicas and add an update config of prism of two and delay of 10 seconds. Okay, now let's redeploy that. Docker stack deploy, Docker compose YML, and node app. So I'm redeploying the, the entire stack with the new configuration. And uh, yeah, let's, lo let's open up the, the visualizer and see what's happening. So right now you see that the services will have been stopped and now have been regenerated. And you see all this um, real time. So right now we got six replicas running and uh, uh, in this distribution. So as the next step, I want to show you something very important. We need to position some of the containers to some of the nodes. And this is important, especially in case of databases, because databases use Docker volumes to externally store their data outside the container. So whenever you are using a volume, you probably want to stick that container to a specific host so that you can recover, restart and still have access to the same data. Of course, you need to make sure that all the data is some, somewhere backed up and you can restore if you need it, if you need to restore that or, or use a network drive. But very often you want to you wanna make sure that certain services and certain containers start up on certain nodes. So this is what we're going to do next. We're going to make sure that the database node always starts on that node that has a label called db and that label is equal to mongo let's call this mongo okay let's go to my vm and add some labels so let's go docker node inspect my vm run and let's filter for uh, spec labels 
and you see that this virtual machine or this node has no labels right now. So let's uh, go Docker node update my VM1, my VM1, and then label add db equals mongo. And now I have added a label, and let's check this. So right now our node one has a label called db mongo. And uh, if you look at this, it has been updated and Visualizer also says that this node has a Mongo, uh, D Mongo label, or DB label that has a value of Mongo. And what I want to do is I want to add a constraint, a placement constraint, that this database should move actually to the other node. So let's update that. So we go to our Docker Compose YML and um, after here we go deploy placement constraints and we add one constraint that says node labels db is equal to mongo okay and um, yeah let's remove this and i have updated the docker compose yml so what we're going to do now is that we're going to redeploy this uh, compose file so docker stack deploy minus C docker compose by ML and let's call this node app again and now we are redeploying so what's happening here we can watch what's happening so it has updated our our DB and it has removed from here and it has moved to the other node very simply so we had we added a constraint and, and this guy will always going to will always start on the on the node that is labeled uh, Mongo or DB and Mongo with the Mongo value. So all you gotta do now, you gotta make sure that this is actually you, you you get the labels right, right? In the next step, let's drain a node. You remember this is on the agenda. So draining a node means that we're gonna remove all the containers from here because we're gonna bring down this node for maintenance. So let's go like Docker node update and availability equals drain and my vm2 so this is happening and this has been drained completely you see and all the containers that were running on this node have appeared on the other node and if you have more more, more, more machines in the class it will of course be distributed in your swarm let's bring this node back up so let's go Docker node update availability equals active and let's see my VM2. Okay, and let's see what's happening. And we could wait for a while, but nothing is going to happen because Docker is not going to do this automatically. So we will be are supposed to get, or this would be the expectation that you would get all these web instances back on this node again. But what you actually need to do, you need to instruct Swarm to do this. So Docker service update force, and then we do node app, we do it with the service name. So we are force updating the web service in the Swarm. And you see now this is happening. This is rescheduling everything. And let's see, you see now the, the, the instances are being distributed between the nodes in the cluster. So we brought one node down, draining it, and we brought it back to the active state. And it was not enough to get scheduled, a, a container scheduled. Actually, if you schedule new containers on, an, on a reactivated node, they will be distributed on the, on the, on the empty node as well. But if you want to redistribute already running containers, you have to force update the service. Okay, so now this is there, everything is working again, we are, we are back on track. Okay, so let's do now the, the rolling update. So for the rolling update, what I want to do is, I want to go to my Docker Compose YML and very simply update this. I just want to change the, the version of my, the version number of my, um, my image so that there's a newer version, that's what we are simulating here. And, uh, we do a docker compose build and then once this is done i'm gonna do a docker compose push and probably come back when this is done okay so i have pushed uh 
the new image to the Docker Hub. So what we can do now, we can redeploy. So I go a Docker, oh, sorry, focusing too much on what's needed on the action. So Docker stack deploy, let's see, Docker compose YML node app. And this is happening right now. So we are updating the service. So if I go Docker stack PS node app now, you will see, okay, let's, let's move this a little bit. Okay, this is much better. Okay, so, okay, I can still move this more. Okay, so now you see here that, um, that this is shutting down, this is running, and we are updating the web service two by two. Actually, if you play, pay, pay close attention, then you will see that it's going two by two. And, uh, well, yeah. I think you should do that at home and see how this works out. But it, it should be updating actually two by two and you can clearly see it here. Okay, so so we have seen the rolling updates and yeah, this was due to the configuration that we created in, uh, in our Docker Compose YML here. So these are the two lines, you know, that make this happen. And um, yeah, I hope you do this at home and, and see how it works out. Okay, high availability cluster in the cloud. So in a real situation on a real project, you want to run a cluster that has multiple manager nodes, that has multiple worker nodes, and is distributed across different regions and uh, that you can use for real uh, production applications. So the good way to start with that is a place that is on, on Docker. So it's, I think it's called Docker AWS uh, Swarm. Class. So let's see um, if we can find the link immediately, probably not. Let's uh, go to my blog and quickly bring it up. So, okay, so there's a cloud formation template here on uh, docker.com. So the link is uh, in the post, you can check it under the video. And um, if you go, like try this one, the community edition uh, AWS template, then after you log on to AWS, let's quickly log on and I, I'll show it to you. So there is a template. There is a very good, this is a very good starting point to configure a swarm cluster just for high avail availability. So you, this is the number of managers. This is the number of workers. And yeah, you set your SSH key and you set, you can configure your instances here. And once you click next, you will get a fully functional cloud cluster. So of course, if you want to build your own, you have to dive into this and make the configuration yourself. We will not do this in this video, but if you want to go for a, for a strong starting point, I would definitely suggest to check out this link and, and work with this one. Okay, uh, I think we have covered all the topics that I had in mind. And there is one other thing that I would like to mention besides Swarm. So this was a Swarm tutorial. But if you want to really do container orchestration on highly scalable production operations, then you want to check out Kubernetes by Google. That is the market leading container orchestration orchestrator. So it's more popular and more widely used than Swarm itself. And the Kubernetes is tightly integrated with the Docker. You can see that, uh, that you can see the Docker is going towards Kubernetes more and more with every release. So, I would definitely suggest to check it out and, and experiment with both technologies. So I, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. And if you want to know more about this or you need a refresher about previous topics, then please check out my other videos or subscribe and there will be more content coming out very soon. Cheers. Goodbye.